Hello and welcome, this is S tier rank, and today I'm going to play some more Inscription Casey's mod. Go ahead and start a new run. I'm going to go with the Insect deck, and we'll do all totem battles, boss totems, and that leaves us with 15 points left to get. So let's do no boss rares and see how we go. Had pretty good luck with our last run using the same set of um, challenges, so... Maybe we'll get it this time. Definitely made a miscalculation in the previous run with that uh, turkey vulture that got us. So let's see what we can do. We'll get the cat and we'll get card counting tentacle monster. And let's see. I don't think we have anything worth sacrificing right now. So we'll go on to the power up base instead. Okay, something we could give health to. How about the tentacle monster? There we go. Now it has some viability. We'll go ahead and back away because it is um, fairly likely that if you press it for the second time, it will indeed um, result in the card bring, being burned. Okay, first fight flying ant. So, if we put down card counter, that would give us three attack power. So, actually, just two after we get our squirrel. But still, that's more than the flying ant by its own. So, we'll go with it. Okay. Now we could get this flying ant started, too. Okay. Get the Ant Queen started as well because they're about to have another um, ant started here. And if we don't get rid of one of them, they're going to have too much power on the board. Okay. Get this working ant down, and we'll have plus three on each of the ant types. There we go. Good. Should be able to turn this around in just one more turn. So, we will let it go on through. There we go. Excellent. Okay, so don't really need items all that bad. Um, as far as sigil swaps go, I don't have a compelling reason to do it. Um, so, in that case, I may go ahead and go for the right hand side of things, but I do kind of hate to miss out on this random event with the prospector. Hmm. I could see putting Stinky on the flying ant instead. Um, or perhaps even the cat. Let's just go that route. That's a little bit unusual, but we'll do it. We are going to go for an insect build. While a ringworm is not an ideal, we'll go ahead and take it. Maybe use it for a um, bone sacrifice instead. So we'll put Stinky on the cat so that we have a chance of um, keeping it around long enough to try to get the undead cat that Wizard told us about. Okay. Okay, let's see. We have a bee that's going to come in and attack our grand fur. Let's try to put down our cat and see if we can get it on to that next level. Okay. I don't know if you have to have nine sacrifices in the same turn or not, because I've come close a time or two to uh, being able to see the undead cat, but I've never confirmed its existence yet, so it's at least twice in the same card at this point. So let's see what we have now. An ant queen. Okay, there we go. And we could do it again. Nope, oh, we can't apparently put it anywhere else since the cat, you know, provides the cost. There we go. Now we can. We can use it in the uh, third lane. I think that, that will probably win the game for us, so we won't get enough to hit nine and one hand, but I think we got three total. 
Um, not enough teeth to trade, so let's go with the prospector event. Oh, sweet. Got lucky and we got our golden pelt. And we'll continue on for an item draw. Scissors will take it. And probably we'll hand, head for the woodcarver that's coming up on the right hand path. Okay, skink. Um, now the cat would be able to rid its power, so we'll just go ahead and do that. And we'll try sacrificing it again to get our tentacle monster on the board. We'll do it again for a flying ant. Okay. Put down our golden pelt to block some damage from the skink. Okay, ant queen. That's got to be at least a fifth or sixth sacrifice for the cat. So we've got to be getting pretty close, I think. Okay. Hey, wizard, how are you doing? Good to see you. Just getting started here, we're about six and a half minutes into the match, and uh, so far so good. I'm trying to do another insect-based run, and I'm um, trying to get that undead cat that you mentioned. Um, I'm about five sacrifices in. I'm not sure if you have to get all nine in one turn, um, but so far it's been pretty good. I'm just uh, making good progress so far. I've already put a stinky sigil from a skunk on the cat, hoping to keep it around um, long enough that we can get all the sacrifices needed. And we're to our first boss in just about seven and a half minutes. Okay, Kingfisher. All right, card counting sounds like it might be a good start to this. That'll put a significant amount of damage on the board right away. All right, we'll take care of it. Hopefully this will get it. Okay, he is going to start to try to pull cards, so maybe we can put down our flying ant and on top of that the smoke so that that'll pull away the kingfisher. Okay, good. And let's see what we draw next. Our cat. So we'll wait a turn and probably draw it in our phase two section. All right, so let's sacrifice our tentacle monster um, since we know that Great White's gonna take it out anyways. And we'll put down a ringworm just to have it on the board. That'd be a little bit of a meme, but we can get something else down here soon enough. There we go, that fast. So I think we just made either our seventh or eighth cat sacrifice, so it must be really close. If we don't see it soon, then maybe it has to happen in the same game for it to uh, show up, which will be difficult, but maybe we'll make it. Okay, let's try out another one of these tentacle monsters. Why not? If we can get the duplicate copied with it, then that will give it four health, unless we enhance it further ourselves. And we do have a golden pelt, so we could do that, or we could do a um, bone token, and we could get a pack rat, so I think we'll go to the left instead. All right, Gek it is. Getting an early Gek may give us a uh, little bit of an overpowered card overall, so we'll see what kind of um, possibilities come our way. We have our pack rat.
Okay. And a dire wolf pup. That's never good. So a Gek could do um, some damage on that, or we could put our cat down. However, it's going to lose out to the dire wolf pup pretty quickly. So maybe a Gek instead would make more sense. Oops. So let's do this over here. And let's do our flying ant over there. And we will hold off on the Gek for the moment. Okay, time for our Gek, and that should be our turn. Okay, now we have a wolf coming in, so that's never all that great. Um, we can get our pack rat on the board though, and I should have used an item, but that's okay. We'll do a deep pull just to uh, clear it off of our list, and I don't think we want to use anything else for the moment. Cause that gets us in the win. So perfect. Teeth pull isn't super handy anyway, so I think it that was probably for the best that it went down that way. Um now sigil swaps, I don't see a straightforward one, so let's go for powering up and maybe we can get the gek looking a little bit stronger. And I don't see a straightforward hard to pull here, so let's go with the canine side of things. Okay, Cody is a bone consuming card, so that might work out just fine. And let's put our Gek up for a power up. Three health makes it quite a bit more viable than just having one health. Okay, a coyote and a wolf cub coming in. Both of those are actually decent threats, so what could we get going against them? Pack rat could take on our wolf cub issue. We could use the cat to uh, get multiple cards on the board and uh, do a sacrifice. And I did that in the wrong order, so unfortunately that's going to backfire on us, and um, let's see if we can recover. I'm not, I'm not thinking I'll be able to, unfortunately. I did a slight misclick in my excitement here. Um, let's see what we get. A frozen possum. That Cody's going to come in and do some damage, so let's go ahead and um, snip our Cody over here. And I think it will be able to take on the rest of this. Oh, we're just one bone away from being able to use that other card. Okay. So, yeah, Packrat's going to do plus two to Coyote. It's going to come down and take out the other one. So, not quite enough, but. That's just how it's going to be for this one. Okay. And we have a Gek, so the Gek can take out that Coyote. And this one can come over, and we should be on a good path from now on, I think. There we go. Looking good so far. Okay. Um, let's see. So we could get the Ant Queen to go against the Porcupine, and that would allow us to create our Worker Ant, and we can also put down a Ringworm. The cat's definitely been sacrificed, I think, nine times now, so it must be nine times in one round for it to uh, be able to become undead, I'm thinking. Let's see. Well, we do have a Cody, so getting a wolf along sounds like a decent idea, but a cuckoo is pretty useful, so let's do a cuckoo instead. 
another power up opportunity. If we can get Gek on power, that would be amazing. Let's see though. Um, perhaps getting our other tentacle fighter up to three, that would make us have a plus six. And the hmm, the coyote could be plus three as well, but not sure. Let's do let's do the gek again. We're gonna go for a strong gek this one. Yeah, I mean that's a good suggestion, wizard. I may need to uh, maybe I can put in Casey's mod in the title too to make it more clear. I'm playing that in particular. Um, and something kind of, you know, intriguing to pull people in. I just need to get in there and do it. I haven't uh, set one up yet in a while. <laughs> I've been pretty basic with those names so far. Let's see, a wolf cub and a coyote and a rabbit. Wolf cub is a big threat due to what it can become. Um, let's see. Tempted to pull one of these over. I'm gonna put the flying ant in front of the coyote since it'll do immediately more damage. We'll see what we get after that. Oh, this is gonna be a big fight actually. So let's pull over our wolf cub and I don't think we'll be able to do anything about the coyote this turn, so I'll just continue on from there. Okay, I think we're going to be le left in somewhat of a poor position here, um, but we'll just keep going and see what comes of it. They're throwing some pretty hard-hitting cards at me, actually. So we'll get our Ant Queen down and see what we can do with that. Fortunately, an Alpha is going to come down and take out our Cody. This is a uh, difficult situation, but I think we're going to lose our candle overall on this turn. Coming up very soon, at least. Okay. Oops. There we go. Still not quite enough to uh, fix our situation here. I think it they may end, may end up winning this one, especially with the rabbit being able to contribute to the fight now. <laughs> okay. All right. I think that's it. Wow. That really um, ramped up in difficulty unexpectedly. Yeah, that was a hard fight. I'm uh, not sure where that came from. Compared to uh, everything I'd seen up to this point, it was, you know, fairly even pace, but that got to be difficult. Okay, now I have a stronger Gek. We'll stick with it. And our first. Um, our second visit with the woodcarver. Who do we have here? Uh, let's go with our pronghorn head. We don't have any... Well, we did have the gek reptile. That would have been actually a perfect um, head to have for our totem, but that's okay. We'll find a way through. So our Gek can actually actually survive the Coyote now, so we'll place it in first and let's get our Flying Ant started. There we go.
All right. Wow. Phase two already. We're going to lose all the cards we currently have on the board, though. We have anything to use against them though. We may actually lose this round just purely due to uh, our situation here. Um, I don't know if we can come out of this. Ah, we do have a Cody that can do a little bit of attack against our Bloodhound. Alright. Um, looks like it's not going to be enough though. So we do have a Cuckoo that can do an attack, but we'll lose it right away. I guess we just have to go for it, though. Okay. Wow, this may be a fast run. 21 minutes, I think, that I'm not going to be able to win against the Prospector at this current rate. expect to see um, this outcome but looks like the prospector won this one considerably Ooh. we'll do a new run we'll consider this our uh, <laughs> warm-up wow did not see that one uh, falling apart as fast as it did that was tough let's just replay it with our current challenge and keep going. Ooh, I think I definitely ate a slice of humble pie on that one. <laughs> but I did move pretty quickly and probably had a few misplays that compounded throughout that. Yeah, that was a tough one for sure, Wizard. I, um, I'm kind of a little bit in shock, to be honest. But it's okay. We will see what we can do to recover. Hmm. This bifurcated strike on the mud turtle would be kind of funny to see. I think we'll go with our wood carver though to start. And let's go with insect enhancements. We're going to do another insect run if possible. Rabbit, and a dire wolf pup, and a rabbit. Bifurcated strike can take care of that dire wolf, so let's go for it. And let's pause there. Okay. And we'll just keep going. So far, so good. Good. I went by pretty quickly. I don't think we're going to have a whole lot to trade in, but let's see what we have. Looks like nothing, actually. So we'll just take the one pelt we have. Hmm. Don't know what we are going to sacrifice. Um, could take the Mud Turtle's ability and put it on Mantis for now. Um, or perhaps even the Ant Queen. Let's do. Let's do the Mantis. That'll give it some viability that just about nothing else gets to enjoy. So it can take a max damage first hit and then. Um, the second hit, it'll be gone, but so many guards don't even get to have that opportunity, so I think that it'll work out nicely. And more rabbits are coming down the board. It's kind of a strange pattern. Seeing that followed by a dire wolf pup just kind of strikes me as unusual. 
Okay. Aha. Okay. We're going to keep going because we want to get that excess damage that we can. Oh, just broke you in. Rattler is a little bit high on the demand for bone, but we'll take it just in case. Alright, bifurcated strike on all insects. That's not bad at all. Nice. Okay. Let's see, a pronghorn that's going to come in. So, ant queen is going to be bifurcated, but our mantis also is. So we could put it in the path of the um, pronghorn and let it take its first hit. And we'll put it down in rabbit pelt to also absorb that first hit. Okay. Let's see, let's get down our flying ant, and we'll have it do a bifurcated strike too. And that'll get us pretty close to where we need to be to get past this. Okay. And we'll pull a tooth. I think that we're going to need to just hold on to what we have for now. don't have enough space to play the ant queen unless we get rid of something and I think we'll just keep going with what we have will make the most sense. Ooh, the rattler. We still don't have enough bone for it though, unfortunately. And a skunk, which is stinky. So we could play that in front of our pronghorn and it'll not be effective for the next turn. Okay. Let's see. So if we got our ant queen down, would we make much of a change? Um, we would have bifurcated strike in two directions, so we could hit the elk fairly hard. Um, it's going to do, let's see, plus two, plus two, and our mantis is going to get one on it, so it'd be one, two, three, so somewhat breaking even here, I think. Um, I think we'll just have to continue forward and see what happens. There we go. I was going to say, I think we had enough, but it may have been off by one. All right. So we still don't have um, the best hand we can. I'm wondering if we should sacrifice another card, um, but maybe not. We can just, we'll go this route. I like our totem decently well, but I feel like we might have another chance here in the moment that our woodcarver get something even better. So let's see what we get. Okay, looks like you can't beat the bifurcated strike, so we'll stay with it. Okay, who are we going to make stronger? We can make our rattler stronger, which would make it six, or not six, um, four, or our mantis having its power doubled going from two to four. So let's do the mantis actually. Have us a really fierce mantis here and if we get a chance to duplicate it that would be like possibly a four and two if we get to do the fungi. 
I don't know about the double strike and triple strike at once. I've been curious about that and also the double double strike or triple triple strike. Um, I might try that if we get an opportunity to do this um, because I've been having the same question wizard and would like to know. Let's put down our worker ant since it's going to get stronger. And we can also put down our flying ant. Um, we'll put it one lane away from our Cody so it's not in the strike zone. Well, there we go. Let's see, so that was a strong start, but I wonder if it's a little too strong and going to overwhelm us. Okay, I think that it's already game over. Oh yeah, that's a good idea, using the Mantis God as a um, sigil sacrifice onto something else. That's an excellent idea. I will try it because I've been wanting to try it for a while and um, I'm glad that you're curious too. It sounds like we could see something interesting happen here if we get the chance. I'll definitely do it. Okay, six of heart, four of might, and three sigils. So three sigils sounds this kind of decent. Four of might sounds a little bit harder. Six health. I really don't know about that one. Six health. I don't know what the max total is on that. Um, we'll just go with sigils and see what happens. I I assume you could have as many as you want as long as you keep combining them. Um, but there could be an upper limit. I'm just not aware of it yet. Okay, cool. Elk and a mole. Wow, starting off with an elk right away. So, what could we do about that? I guess putting a ant in front of our mole would be a start because it, it's not going to block the airborne. And um, it's bifurcated, so it'll do a decent amount of damage right away. I think it, we are going to have to play our awesome to have a chance so okay here we go all right I think that we have it from here good So let's see, we have enough items as is. Um, we could go to the wood carver. I think it, having another wood carver option may make more sense than anything else, so we'll head that way. A dire wolf with bifurcated strike sounds amazing, so we'll do that. Ooh, unkillable. We'll do that with our insect for at least a turn or two. See how it turns out. Having bifurcated strike is nice, but unkillable could be even better, I think. Especially when we're trying to do, you know, low cost like ants and such. Here we go. Okay, so an elk. Could put us a stinky skunk in front of it, but it is going to move after all. So, what do we think about putting a worker ant maybe to the far right side? 
see what happens. Okay. Let's put us a skunk in front of the elk. And I'll hold it up for just a little bit. I think that we may have to pull the elk over because our bloodhound's going to come in and our elk's going to do that. So that's going to be plus four and they're going to win. So I think we have to pull the elk. Okay. Okay, let's see. Ant Queen can be played if we replace our skunk. And we can get our worker ant down too. There we go. That should be enough to, uh, I think, win us the round. There we go. Wish I didn't have to use the hook that early on, but I really didn't want to lose the match and lose our um, possibility of using the smoke later on. Ooh, we're going to go with Black Goat. Ooh, stinky. That's a nice one to have. I think I'll keep on with Unkillable Insect. Ooh, okay. So a worker ant that can grow up. So let's see. We can put our rabbit pelt down and get our worker ant on the board. We'll just uh, put it here to start and go from there. Oh, it turns into an ant queen. I had no idea that that was a possibility. That's really interesting. Um, let's get our dire wolf into play because I think if we don't do that, we're going to have some troubles very quickly on. So we'll do this number. Fortunately, we're going to lose our ant queen, but it'll come back into our hand due to the unkillable. And let's see, our dire wolf take out the possum and then do two more damage, and I think we'll be okay. All right, now we can get our ant queen back on the board. Go over here and keep going. Oh, that's gonna undo most of our progress, unfortunately, but we can get rid of the alpha now. And the dire wolf took out the wild bull so there's a new one. It's just uh, a whole bunch of them all at once. Let's see what we can get here now. Okay, so let's get another worker ant on the board and that will put off enough attack power that we can take out the wild bull and um, put an equal amount of damage on the board, I think, overall since the porcupine's coming in. All right. Okay, so let's see. I'm trying to see if we can actually recover this. Um, the ant queen being one in three, we could sacrifice and get another one on the board. Um, but we don't have to. Let's just keep going. Let's see if we can get excess damage out of this. All right, so we'll get another one on the board. Here we go. Okay, one tooth. <laughs> it's something, I suppose. Okay, let's get the beaver because we're going to try to get the upgraded dam's ability. It was very nice earlier when I had it in the previous stream. Alright, upgrading might. Let's do the dire wolf. 
There we go. And we'll go ahead and back away before things get a little too hectic. Who, who can we put our damn building onto? Um, dire Wolf would be pretty nice because the bifurcated attack would have some ability. Um, or maybe on the Ant Queen because if it spawned an Ant that also had bifurcated attack, that would be even stronger. So I think that, that might make the most sense overall. Okay. Or not bifurcated attack, but um, rather dams with ant spawning. So I think that's what it would actually do. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. So, we can get the Ant Queen on right away. Um, let's see about doing so. So we will put it over here and it will lay down some dams and that gives us more ants. So we already have four ants in our hand and um, yeah, these dams are unkillable too. So let's see what happens. ant down. Wow, we're generating a lot of ants. Interesting that it puts the dam back in our hand too. So the dams are zero cost as well, so we could play them in front of the strange frogs and it looks like it's going to keep generating ants for us. I think I just found a way to get an insane deck here. I mean, look at all these. I, I don't even know if it's going to be a fight going forward. I, I, I see the potential here already. Yeah, I don't think it will have a problem going forward as long as I don't make a terrible mistake. Um, let's see. Go ahead and play another ant. <laughs> yeah, that is a lot of ants. I think that I've definitely stumbled upon a uh, little bit of a exploit here. <laughs> okay, so let's put a dam in front of the elk and we will do another work ant and let's see, another dam. There we go. Okay, wow, that is pretty wild. Okay, let's see. How many pelts do we end up with? I think just three overall. Um, Raven sounds like a decent pick, and then the wolf, and wow, this uh, this guy over here sounds like a good pick with 11 attack power. I don't think we can let it go. Let's get rid of this guy too, and we'll do the wolf too. Maybe it's not perfect, but better than what we had. And should we play our wolf on any, on top of anything? Let's see. Well, we can only sacrifice ants for it, so let's keep what we have and keep going. Nice. Okay. Our coyote could take out two points on there, and the raven is not going to be able to take out, or it won't damage the dam. Which will give us plus two, so we I think we need an ant on the board more than anything right now to power up our attack situation. Um, an ant queen could be even more valuable. Um, however, I don't think I have enough to put on the board to get more than one going. 
So let's do this instead. Okay. There we go. I think I am the Ant King. It's looking like it. <laughs> let's play a Rattler to take out our Bloodhound. And next turn, I think we'll have some uh, excess damage. Wow, this is really wild. I really had no idea that I was going to have a game like this one today. Like, I'm just kind of overwhelmed by how many ants I have. <laughs> this is cool. Okay. And let's see. Can we play anything else to get overwhelming attack? I think that's about it, though. Yeah, I think that I just need to uh, stay grounded and I should be able to win this. Like, I really can't imagine losing this at this point. Um, crazier things have happened, though, so let's wait and see. <laughs> uh, let's do Mooseback. Okay, I think that getting items makes the most sense, so let's go that route. Alright, let's do Mud Turtle again. Card cutting is just such a nice feature to be able to take out a card that you don't like that the enemy is using against you. see a mud turtle is incoming we could use our ant queen to lay out some dams which would then turn into ant spawners um, we'd have to use our black goat to get that going though or we could just use our first ant I think that we'll do that and we'll take out our flying ant so I think it, it may work out just fine if not, we'll uh, use card cutting or something on one of the others. Okay, they're going to do plus two. And then that'll be it. Fortunately, Stinky is making my work grant not have power. So I think we're going to have to do something like this. Okay, and uh, that may be about all that we can do for the moment. All right, let's cut a card. These mud turtles are going to be a problem otherwise. And we will start attacking there we go I think that'll recover us oh boy it's gonna be a close one Here we go. Ooh, we could get us a moose buck running across the board, but I don't think it's going to beat the power of our ant army. There we go. I was anticipating having to use um, this many items, but it kind of looked like it was a necessity. Let's go trade in some cards. Maybe we'll get us a golden pelt. It'll be close at least. There we go. Alright, not too bad. 
And let's see we, what we can combine up. All right, a powerful worker ant that's gonna get really strong. This would be nice. Having four defense, it's not bad at all. Okay. A strong worker ant. I think that we may have to go ahead and get it on the board and keep going. Okay. Our golden pelt is going to have to block out our rattler for a turn. Okay, and we could get us another Ant Queen started with um, blocking out a lane. However, that Elder Rattler is going to be a pretty big problem, so let's um, block what we can over here and maybe get us a Worker Ant started on our Edler Rattler. I think we'll have enough power on the board to actually take it out, which is good. Okay. So let's see. We may have just enough to get everything, for the most part, back on the board. Um, we can get us another Ant Queen going. Oops. We actually want to do it this way. And... Let's get us a worker ant as well. There we go. And that's about all we can do. Boy, they are definitely being tough with me getting rid of my stuff using the um, adders. That's okay. We just have to uh, keep coming back with what we have. All right. Four, 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 four. Nice. Good amount of excess damage, too. All right. Guess it's time that we take in our pelts and trade them in. Okay, I always think this 2-5 dire wolf sounds pretty nice. Let's see what we have in our hand though. We do have a 3-5, so let's go with it. And then our golden pelt, a mantis god. We will take it because we've been curious about combining it with a different strike. So um, if I get the chance, I will see what happens when we do that. Ooh, that's interesting to see things grow stronger. Um, I do think I'll stick with unkillable, but we will take that particular piece. Okay, here we go. Okay, can get us a worker ant down that gets stronger and it would actually survive our um, rattler attack. So we'll put it there to defend and take it out and keep going. There we go. And I think that we need to consider some other moves here. Um, an ant queen that can lay down some dams may be better than uh, keeping this other one that's already weakened. So let's go with that. There we go. 
Okay. And I think that will end our turn. Good. Wow, they're already throwing these Elder Adlers at us, so... They are working hard to make us lose. Um, so what can we do against that? Wow, that is a lot of firepower all at once. And an Adder that's just going to get stronger. So a bee could take out the Adder. Um, this Elder Adler is going to definitely be harder to get rid of, but we do have dams that are unkillable. So let's put, let's see, we have a dam and a, or a squirrel and a bee we could spend. And we could get rid of the Elder Rattler if we did that and then block this other one with the dam. So maybe we should do that. There we go. And let's do it again over here. Okay, and we will block this other one with a dam, or we could put a worker ant, and this would be enough damage to take out this lane, and this lane as well, and that lane. I think it's might actually win us the hand, come to think of it. Wow, impressive, cool. I think that this may be the best setup I've had for ants, possibly ever. Good. It's coming right along. Alright. Somebody to enhance the powers of. Um, let's see. I guess let's put it on, well, I don't want to do Mantis God, actually, because we're going to try to sacrifice it and put it on something else, or maybe I'll sacrifice the Dire Wolf and put it on the Mantis God, um, sigil-wise, so let's do, actually, let's go ahead and do the Mantis God, because either way, that that is a wise decision, because that gets us six attack power on that particular route. It may even be worth duplicating it here too. Um, but this is such a strong worker ant that if I could get it on the board, it would be so hard to stop with four health. Um, so I think I'll go with it instead. It's going to grow up to have five health. Oh yeah, Mantis God plus Mantis, or Mantis, Mantis God. That does sound like a good combo. I think that I will try it as soon as I get our um, next chance to sacrifice for a sigil replacement. Okay, angler time. We have two bait buckets on the board already, and a raven that we need to take out. We could put our skunk down, but that will only slow down the raven a little bit. Smoke won't be able to affect it, so I'm tempted to say that we should just cut that card. Um, it's not a great situation. I think that I really should have had another item in my hand to have a chance here. Um, let's play what we have, though, and see what comes up. Okay, great white right away. So let's draw and we'll put the smoke out and um, cutting the raven might actually be important to do. Um, I'm trying to see if I have any other choice, but it's feeling like I don't have a very good situation going on here. Okay. And let's see, we'll have to draw this and we could get the moose butt going and cut one of the bait buckets open and we should be 
think safe from then on somewhat. So I can do that and keep the moose buck hitting and it will do more damage than the two of those. And we should be safe for a moment or two. This is going to take all three blood, but if we can start here and move to the right, we'll have a chance to uh, cover that up before we get too far along, I think. Oh, that was it. That, that was a really rough turn of events. I honestly don't know if I could have won against that angler any other way. I'm actually a little bit shocked by how tough that one was. Yeah, that was a tough one, wasn't it, Wizard? I'm a little bit um, surprised at what they threw at me. It threw two bait buckets down right away and a raven. So, wow, that was kind of a shocker, actually. <laughs> That's okay. That was a ton of fun. I think that um, the AI was starting to detect that I had a really strong hand with that um, insect run. I was doing the ants. So... We'll just have to try it again next time and uh, see what happens. Thanks for watching. This has been STR Inc. You can follow me on Twitch and Twitter at STR Inc. And I'll have a replay up on YouTube soon. Thanks and have a good one.